Hey guys, it's Will. So this video is going to go through heart failure in cats. And this is just based on my experience with my cat starting on July 22nd. Um, so they call it hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, HCM. And I'm just going to tell you everything that I went through and what I'm doing and some sites that you can look at. So if you have issues, just so, even if you don't right now, but you might think about it in the future, if your cat um, starts to develop any type of heart failure. So I'm just going to go through what happened with my cat. So some of you guys know chemo. Um, you've been seeing him in my videos. <clears throat> and so I also wanted to share just how he's doing because uh, it's been pretty, you know, stressful for the past few months. So on July 22nd, uh, 2019, I took chemo to the vet because I started noticing his mouth was opening when he was breathing on the weekend. So on the Monday or the Tuesday um, that uh, I took him to the vet and they did an x-ray and I was surprised they, that the vet said there was quite a bit of fluid in his chest, lungs area. Um, and she said it was pretty severe. So that was really surprising. Um, Chemo's about 11 years old. We rescued him when he was two and we've had him for nine years. So we estimate he's around 11 years old. So I wasn't expecting any type of issue, but you know, obviously things happen, but <clears throat> it was kind of early for, for any kind of issue in my opinion. Um, so his gums were also pale when they looked at them, which means that, you know, with the breathing issues, he wasn't getting enough oxygen. Um, so we decided to keep him at the vet for five days. It ended up being five days. They gave him oxygen treatment. So they pump oxygen into a small kind of kennel that's mostly um, enclosed. And they also give him diuretics, which helps drain the fluid. Um, and an IV to maintain electrolytes, so sodium, potassium. So it's kind of a balance between draining the fluid, but also not overdoing the, you know, losing the electrolytes, um, but also adding fluids in. So, um, <clears throat> you know, diuretics are hard on the body, um, but, you know, there's a, there was a lot of fluid buildup. So the heart isn't pumping and doing what it's supposed to be doing. So the fluids build up and that helped that prevents, you know, that makes the, the, the breathing um, difficult. And he also, they had a cardiologist that goes around to different vet clinics uh, every week or as needed. And um, so that was kind of nice because there's, you know, more of a specialty there. So when he came home after the five days, um, they put him on diuretics, which is furosemide or Lasix. That's another name for it. Um, they gave him Plavix, which is a, a drug that prevents clots because what happens with HCM is that cats can get back leg paralysis. Um, so you want to prevent the clots. They can also use, like people can, there's other alternatives. I don't want to get too much into it, but uh, right now, but uh, and the other thing he, he added, they added was the ACE inhibitor and that's to help um, with the blood vessels and stuff. So. Um, those were the meds and um, I was told to monitor his breathing so that when he's sleeping um, that they should be roughly under 30 breaths per minute um, so they are higher than that during the day but um, you know that's kind of a rough guideline um, after about a month or so I noticed that his mouth would open on occasion even though his breathing rate seemed to be normal when he was resting. Um, and he also, it seemed a little bit like a, a squeezing sensation. Like when he was breathing, it seemed to be a little more involved when he was breathing. I, I, it was hard for me to really judge at that point because I never really thought his breathing was, you know, I never noticed it before. So the fact that I'm noticing it sort of made me think that, you know, there was something more involved going on there. So I ended up taking him back in and this this time they added a vet med and or it's called pemobendin. It's a drug. It's a liquid in my case that helps contract the heart. <clears throat> and she the vet also said to increase the diuretic to three quarters of a pill every eight hours. So there was a bit of an increase in the diuretic for a few days until the vet med seemed to be working and he seemed to be doing okay. And then I reduced it back to a half 
of a um, diuretic, which I'll get into the meds in a bit. But after about 10 days of that, um, Kimo completely stopped eating and he got very lethargic. He was just sitting there in this weird location. So I took him to the vet again and um, because it's hard to pill him um, when he doesn't eat, um, I ended up putting him in the hospital again for the weekend where they could pill him. And they also tried an appetite stimulant to try to get him to eat. And on Sunday, a, a different vet was there and they called suggesting doing a thoracentesis, which is <clears throat> removing fluids from the chest area. Um, and they ended up taking 140 milliliters of fluid, which, you know, I guess they say it's about a half of a pop can full. So we were hoping that that would help, but it didn't affect his, he didn't eat, he still wasn't eating. Um, but I think it was good to get the fluids off just for breathing purposes. So the vet called on Monday and said, um, you know, we should come in to see him. They'll bring him in. And I thought, um, I was expecting kind of the worst at this point because he still hadn't eaten over the weekend. And at that point it had been about, um, four or five days. But when we got to the vet and he came out of the kennel, he was, he kind of burst out of the kennel and he was rubbing us and really happy to see us. So, um, you know, we, we didn't have the heart at that point. We thought, you know, he still looks like he's got some, some, uh, some zip. So we didn't want to say goodbye to him at that point. Um, but I knew if I took him home, it was going to be hard to, you know, get him to take the pills without even try. I can't even pill my, my cat because we have a pill popper and it just doesn't, doesn't work. He's really smart. And, um, so we took him home and he still wasn't eating, but we noticed he was really dehydrated. He was drinking like a fish all day. And we thought because of the fluids they took out of his chest and increased diuretics, and he might not have been drinking when he was there because the cats can get stressed out. So we figured he needed some fluids. Um, so we gave him some subcutaneous fluid, which has sodium in it. And um, we just decided to stop the medications because we weren't really able to give him the medications at that point anyways, because I, I hide them in foods and stuff, which I'll get into. And um, so basically <clears throat> that was really a very last ditch effort to what I call a Hail, Hail Mary pass to just say, let's just stop the meds and give them some fluids and see what happens. And a day or two went by and I still, I thought, okay, this isn't working. And then all of a sudden, um, I think it was Wednesday afternoon, he started eating and just got back to normal. So then we couldn't believe it, but we ended up, um, I called, consulted with the vet and she thought, and I thought, well, maybe it was the vet med and because we added that about 10 days ago, she thought that, you know, that was too long. It should have happened. If he was having an issue with it, it would have happened sooner, but it's either the Pimobendin, um, which was the last drug that was added or somehow he got really dehydrated. I know he definitely got dehydrated when he was at the vets, but he stopped eating when he was at home. So we don't know if somehow that happened to be from the diuretics and I don't know, but anyway, um, for a while now, I've added back in all the drugs except the Pimobendin at that point, um, and everything was back to normal. And then I knew that once he started, he was only on a quarter diuretic because he had been really dehydrated. The vet said to start at a quarter, which was less than I used to give him. So then we ended up updating the, uh, up, up, increasing the diuretic, um, you know, over time. So I restarted, the, as I said here, I restarted the vet med or, or the diuretics at a quarter and then i've increased it to over to a half um because i started noticing you know a bit more breathing issues and then i decided uh, to add the pimobendin back in again but i only used half of what they had recommended because that that drug from what i read is really important to, to help contract the heart it can really extend life span even though there's not a lot of testing on cats versus dogs and stuff um, there's also like known side effects with pimobendin in terms of lethargy and, and eating loss, loss of appetite. So I had mixed feelings, but I felt like he really needed to, to get this if he could. So I've been using half of what they subscribed, prescribed. I don't even know, you know, if that's going to work at all or as well, but I've been just watching them very carefully and introduced half of the amount 
other people have used pills in the states especially and liquids can be um they can have problems when they're in a solution but the vet assured me that these were you know a reputable lab and that the liquid should stay in solution and everything so i'm still going with the liquid um I have recently up, uh, increased the diuretic to three quarters every eight hours, um, which he had been on off and on a bit because the breathing is kind of, the rate is normal, but occasionally there's a little bit of mouth opening, just a little bit. And I started feeling like he was maybe getting a bit bulkier, like with the fluid, like I wasn't sure because um, I just have to be careful when I feel him, you know, it feels a little bit um liquidy in that term you know just from the weight and also that breathing like with the squeezing a little bit of effort to breathe but he's doing really well he eats and purrs and grooms himself and goes outside and just all sorts of normal cat activity so we're definitely watching him very closely a comp the, the obviously a couple things are concerned the breathing which is trying to manage it with the diuretics not to give him too much diuretic but also the vet med and is it going to have an effect or is a diuretic also going to cause um, dehydration or more lethargy or loss of appetite so for now everything's great he's still eating and everything is somewhat normal maintained as best I can <clears throat> so I've sort of thought a bit ahead like what am I going to do if the breathing gets worse or and I have considered doing another x-ray going back to the vet and doing another thoracentesis which takes fluid out of the chest area it doesn't get the fluid in the heart area but it gets the chest area which could help him with breathing um and also you know, I'll, I'll consult with the vet about how high the diuretics can go uh, you know usually it's based on per kilogram of body weight and chemo is a fairly big cat but um at three quarters every eight hours um i'm you know not sure how much higher i'd want to go but we will see so like if the thoracentesis is go in there bring him in take him home again and, and it actually helps for a period of time without the diuretic you know without increasing the diuretic that would be a good thing because it's more of a physical removal of the fluid rather than trying to use the medications but like i said it only gets them out of certain areas so it's a good it's a fine balance definitely between too much drugs and too little you know in terms of helping them so i was going to go through the medical reg regimen that I'm doing. Maine Coons are very difficult to pill, um, but you might have luck using a pill popper. And some people put pills in little capsules as well. Um, also, the certain things that worked for your cat might not work after a while because they get smart or they get tired of eating a certain food or just because of their illness, the things change their interests. So this is something that you have to keep tweaking and modifying potentially over time so you have to see how you do with your cat so one of the things he's on is an ace inhibitor four decor it's called once a day i crush this pill it has a nice scent to it and i add it to a spoonful of hills kd wet food so this kd food is for kidney disorders um, low sodium so basically i just give him a small amount because i want to make sure he eats that and then the rest if you want to give him more food you know it can be without any meds so you don't want to taint the food all the time everything they eat has drugs in it <clears throat> and the diuretic is called furosemide or lasix every eight hours three times a day i give a half and some like i said three quarters has, has been recently or a few times in the past as well um, when i added the vet med in we went up to three quarters for a bit and the vet did that three quarters as well when he was in there with the thoracentesis um, So you can get the pill already cut for you. You can ask them to cut it in halves or quarters. And um, I was putting the furosemide into temptation treat. So I would cut a temptation in half and I would scoop out the inside and I would put the pill. Sometimes the, the food breaks up, like the Triscuit breaks or doesn't have any filling, so it's difficult. But he really loves the temptation treat, so I I do those. Of course, these, a lot of these treats have sodium, so if you're if you're doing a low sodium, you don't want to go crazy with the treats. But um, if you're using them for pilling, then obviously you know it's critical. Um, my cat at one point was doing pill pockets, and he stopped eating pill pockets, and then lately he's been open to pill pockets again. So I've been putting furosemide in there, which makes things a lot easier. <clears throat> and Plavix, 
which is clopidogrel. It's uh, anti-clotting, and that's a quarter pill daily. This one's really tough because it's very bitter. So that's why some people use those gel capsules. But I break it into about four or more pieces, and I stick it into a temptation treat. And um, it doesn't always work because he, he smells it or something or licks it and doesn't eat them. But I try a few times to get him to take it. And that's one that can be done, you know, during the day. So it's not, it doesn't all have to be done in the morning at the same time. But um, that one is a bit tricky. I tried crushing it in food, but it kind of taints the whole food process. So Vetmen was the one I mentioned that had the, might have might have caused them problems, but it helps contract the heart. And it's kind of a important um, drug and can be really helpful and extend the life of many cats. It was 0.25 mils twice a day. So I don't know what you would get if you get a pill. It'll be different. Um, and I'll show you some resources on that uh, in a bit. And um, this was added because the other ones hadn't been working enough. So we added that at the end, uh, recently in the last month or so. And that um, that's when he stopped eating. So I mean, like I mentioned, I've been using half the dose to just to kind of see. What I did lately, the last couple of days, is I put a little bit of tuna juice. I drained a, a, tin, a can of tuna into a separate little container of juice because the juice seemed to get absorbed into the tuna over time so I, or dried out or something. So I wanted to have that juice separately. And I put a, a little bit of juice on a plate and then I add a couple drops of that vet med. And, and the last couple of times he licked it up pretty well. So I'm hoping I can continue to do that. Um, but yeah, putting it with something really strong smelling like fish or tuna or something they like would be is probably the best thing because it seems to taint some of the food. So if any of these things don't work, you can put the food back in the fridge. So if you put a scoop of food down and they don't eat it, you could try putting it back in the fridge. I put it back in the container. Sometimes I give him the can to eat right out of the can because it's just a different environment for him. And he'll eat it when it's in a can. So like if it's in the center of a can, you scoop it put that scoop back in the center of the can, put it in the fridge and try again later. Um, but my cat's eating the ACE inhibitor every day, every morning, first thing without a problem. Um, yeah, like when I put Plavix pills in the temptation, sometimes he won't eat them. So I put them back on the counter and I try again later when he gets hungry. And for the most part that's worked. Or if, if you have to take it out and put it in something else, you might have to do that. Um, but, so that's the whole scene. Um, it's October 15th today. It's getting close to three months. I've been really, based on the severity of chemo's issue, which was a big shock, I've been um, trying to come to terms with the, you know, the fact that he might not live as long as I, as I thought. Um, I was hoping, you know, for 20, and now it's like day by day, and I don't even know like week by week if he's gonna. But I'm hoping I can maintain things at this point. But like in the past few months, it's been a, a constant decline and then the, the but, but the last one with him not eating and was kind of potentially drug related so but it has seemed like a like when i had to go to the vet med and it was um you know an increase in drugs I, i've seen other people's cats who they're only on an ace inhibitor or just something small and so it seems like you know chemo's in a in a pretty bad situation apparently maine coons have a high like a 30 percent have genetic tendency to to get this disease so um you know like i said i'm trying to be realistic here and just take it day by day so i have no idea but it seemed like it was a pretty dire situation so i just kind of hope that i can keep some sort of um you know stability because after he stopped eating we had, I started in adding in the drugs again the, the breath started getting bad again so he gotten really dehydrated and then I think as time, as it starts filling up again the fluids came back so um, trying to keep that balance and hopefully it won't progress but you know it has been fairly progressing rapidly so we'll see what happens I wanted to give you guys some some sites that I find really helpful so there's a Facebook group for cats I'll put it in the description below in the video, but um, there's a Facebook group for cats that have heart disease, and there's a lot of amazing people that help each other and support each other. And um, they've got, people have done a whole bunch of different things in terms of um, compounding some of the pills into tasty little treats at the pharmacy. Um, just a bunch of different things that people have discovered. There's a Tufts University site that has a ton of information 
on um, heart failure for cats. And there's a document. Actually, let me just um, show you a few things. Oops, that's a guitar thing. So here's a, a chart um, which goes through the drugs. So for cats, um, furosemide, oxygen, nitroglycerin sedation, that's the thoracentesis I mentioned where they remove the fluids. Pemobendin, that's the heart contraction medication. Um, and the clopetagrel here is the for the clotting. Um, and they also mention here dietary restriction of sodium. So you've got your ACE inhibitor, furosemide, clopetagrel. So these are the four that I'm on. Um, <clears throat> and... Um, so that's, and then there's detail on every individual drug down below. Um, and like I said, um, it's really good to get a general idea of what is happening um, with the various meds and the, their purposes and stuff like that. So I'll put those links in the description below. And I just hope this helps anybody who's seeing this in the future. And I hope that your cat, if you have pets, that your cat or dog doesn't get this heart failure but if, if you do um, you know keep your eye on your pet, pets for breathing issues I had a dog that had breathing coughing and that and it was actually more from the dust of all the years being near the floor in the lungs so it was like a lung irritation issue it wasn't really related to heart even though he had a bit of a heart murmur um, there wasn't any major heart problem in the case of my dog but um, just something to keep an eye on um, because cats especially can really hide their issues really well, so you, they won't show much of an issue. Um, this is a, uh, a bunch of interesting tips for feline heart disease, um, for food, how to get the cat to eat food, because they'll, they'll trick, they'll change a lot what they like to eat. Um, so there's a, there's a bunch of information on the drugs as well. So I'll put all this below and hopefully that'll help you guys. Okay, let me know what you think and uh, good luck. I hope for all the best for all you guys with your pets. See you later.